everyone. My name is Jenna and I am so delighted to welcome you to my brand new channel, Life at Runhaven. I'm really looking forward to sharing my home with you. It is an 1879 Victorian surrounded by half an acre that I am slowly developing into gardens. And I'd really like to take you all along for the ride. This is a project I've been looking forward to launching for quite some time, and it feels really nice to finally be getting started. I want to thank you in advance for your patience with me as I learn the ins and outs of filming and voice recording and all the technological bits that come along with documenting this kind of journey. This morning I'm going to be hanging a curtain in my parlor and then ironing some linens and I thought I'd bring you along on this nice quiet April morning. box of donations I've got waiting to go out to the car and in this very beat up piece which is collecting some leftover winter and Christmas bits I also have a pile of garland on the porch waiting to go to the barn so in here I keep some linens and curtains it's a nice place to store these things this is the curtain I'm hanging today. Oliver wants me to open those boxes right now. They just came. to go get my screwdriver. I had already brought the hammer in the room, but had to go get my screwdriver and of course I have a little coffee. set the end of the screw because it gives you such better purchase when you're trying to drive the screw. I'm sure many of you know this technique, but in case you were wondering why I'm banging on the screw, that's why. This room has undergone 
massive transformation from what it looked like when we moved in and I'm really looking forward to making a video showing you some of those changes. to the road. We were one of the first homes to exist on this street and of course it's quite populated around it now as we are in a pretty populous city. But something that happens with these older homes is that the road in front widens over time and encroaches upon it and for someone who grew up in the country that has been quite an adjustment. I definitely intend to hang some proper drapes on these windows as well as in the front dining room. Not only for the aesthetics, but for the privacy and for the warmth in the winter. I'm in a place in my life right now where I'm really having to reprogram myself to slow down and I'm sure some of you can identify with that. In my last two careers, I rewarded that high-powered type A perfectionist mentality and I'm really having to focus on changing those habits. I walked away from nursing in February of 22 to be at home full time, to take care of myself, take care of my husband, and to take care of my house. The things that were most important in my life were being neglected and it was time for some massive change. And I'm so grateful to be able to be at home and spend a quiet morning doing the things that I love and to share it with all of you. This is the kind of thing I have to explain to my chiropractor when she asks me what on earth I've been doing. Oh, just hanging off of a ladder at a weird angle. Hanging some curtains. I've chosen to use cafe rods here on these sheer curtains 
because first of all what I'm hanging is so light that the rod can handle it and secondly the cafe rod holds it so closely to the frame that it hangs nice and flush. between us and the road. I would love to use antique curtains, but that would just be a recipe for disaster with a big dog who occasionally will jump up on the curtains and pull them down. These are pretty durable for such a delicate look. And Another advantage to those cafe rods is that they will just pop off or bend if he jumps up on them instead of the curtain being ruined altogether. I decided to change this green velvet cover out for this French blue. There goes a feather. I definitely prefer feather pillow forms and I, I ch tend to purchase them one size bigger, but sometimes it can be a real battle to get them into the overstuffed pillowcase, which I cut out the uh, fight I had with the pillow there. It was a little ridiculous. against that blue velvet and it's got me thinking that really is pretty it's got to come see what I'm doing
the cameras turned around facing my dining room. And that coffee is still hot. This carafe is just amazing. really enjoy it especially when I'm ironing these really beautiful pieces This piece has some delicate cut work in it, and so I was being quite careful to not catch it with the end of the iron there. products, especially her ironing water. And a little splash in this pitcher filled up with distilled water is the perfect amount to refill this iron. I know I should have turned it off before I did this, but I was being lazy. There's quite a collection of things behind me on the buffet because I've been handling a bit of an influx of items from liquidation of my mother's estate and some thrifted items. So I've got some piles sitting about that need to be dealt with, but this is real life in a real life house that has real life people in it. 
that's the kind of channel I intend to have. One where, where I'm showing you what my home really is like. ironed a bad crease into that there. I, that's why I, I take, try to keep a nice light touch on the iron. It's easy to ruin linen if you're not careful. This is the detail on this piece. It's, this is called hard anger. It's a type of embroidery where you bind the fibers together with a piece of floss and cut out the rest to leave this negative space and it's just gorgeous on this particular piece. This linen is so hefty and it has this feeling of almost silkiness that antique linen gets over time and I, I just love it. This is why I will brave the bins of miscellaneous linens at estate sales, etc. because once in a while you find a real gem. I decided to sit down and actually look at this magazine that's been sitting table for a little while and this particular spread really brought me back to when I worked at a living history museum one of the largest ones here in the Northeast I spent many years there studying and teaching and I taught open hearth cooking courses I really, really enjoyed that, and I really hope that our next home has a fireplace like that where I could play around with that again. Oh, this spread about New England clam chowder just made me yearn for our very favorite chowder spot in uh, New Hampshire, or at least our favorite so far. It's called Geno's. It's right by the Strawberry Bank Museum in Portsmouth, New Hampshire. And if you ever get a chance to go there, please do treat yourself. Thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate that you took the time out of your day to spend with me and I hope that you enjoyed it, and I'll see you again soon.